Hello my little rays of sunshine. How are you all doing out there today? I'm Michelle the introvert and today I have something special that I'm going to start. I am just about to start a new series that I'm going to be filming over the next little while and even into the new year. I won't be doing a steady stream of it, one video after another, after another, after another, but it'll be sprinkled throughout a lot of the different videos and activities and outings that I go on. But it'll be a special series um, tuning into what is going on economically around us today and these days. Yes, the high, high and continual rising of costs, especially in groceries. So my friends, if you're a little bit of inter interested, please join me today. We are all very, very aware of how quickly the cost of everything is going up. Groceries is going up, gas is going up, and even when you go to thrift stores these days, they have been increasing, increasing the prices of items. But my focus here today is going to be on food, on groceries, and in particular, I want to share some recipes with you in this series that will help you manage and stretch the money out and stretch the food out. And I have my apron handy because recipe number one today is going to be making bread. Yes, I have a very good recipe for making homemade bread. And as a lot of you already know, the prices of loaves of bread in the stores has really gone up and it continues to keep going up too. So my friends, I haven't personally been buying store-bought bread lately just because I've been finding the cost is, boy, it's really getting up there to buy loaves of bread. It's one thing to buy it on sale, but for the regular price, it's really getting up there. So what have I done? I have invested in um, all, a big bag of all-purpose flour, and anytime I see flour on sale, I've been buying it. Yes, I have. <laughs> So my friends, today's recipe, recipe number one for this series of stretching out the money, stretching out the food, recipe number one is making homemade bread. I have made this recipe here many, many times and it's a wonderful, wonderful recipe. And it is called Purity White Bread. Scald three cups of milk or water, pour into a large bowl and add one fourth a cup of white sugar, four teaspoons of salt, one fourth a cup of shortening or lard. Stir until shortening melts, cool to lukewarm. Meanwhile, sprinkle two tablespoons of yeast in a bowl and one cup of lukewarm water in which has been dissolved two teaspoons of sugar. Let stand for 10 minutes, then stir with a fork. Add to milk or water and shortening mixture. Add five cups of flour and mix. Gradually add another three to five cups of flour as needed. Turn dough onto lightly floured board. Bake at 360 degrees. I have everything all measured and set out here in front of me. And before I start, I'd like to show you this here on yeast. Some of you know this already, but some of you probably don't know. And if you go into the store to buy yeast, they have a choice between bread machine yeast and also the quick rising yeast. And today we're not going to be using the bread machine. Today we're going to be using this, the quick rising yeast, because we're doing it all by hand. <laughs> and that's part of the fun for sure. So my friends, I'm going to give you a quick look at what I have here so we can get this wonderful recipe started. In my kettle I have some water and I'm not going to be using milk in my recipe. I'm going to be using water, which I usually use. And it turn, the recipe turns out really, really nice when I use water. And I've got my nice bag of all-purpose flour. My big bowl is set out. My little bowl is set out. This is for the yeast. I have salt in this Tupperware bowl. Shortening here, or lard and some sugar in that one. So I'm all set. So the first thing that I'm going to do is turn my kettle on and while the water is boiling in my kettle or starting to boil I'm going to put the white sugar 
the salt and the shortening in this big Tupperware bowl here. Alrighty, I have the lard or the shortening. I have that there. I have the salt in the middle and the sugar is in the bowl as well. And here comes boiling cup number one of water. There's the second one and here's the third one, the last one right there. And I'm going to stir this to get this melted. Now because this water is boiling, it'll take a little bit before it cools down to the lukewarm temperature, which is what you need before you add the yeast in there. So I'm going to let this melt a little bit. But in the meantime, while that melts down, I'm going to start working with this yeast. In this bowl here, I'm going to put in two teaspoons of sugar. The sugar is what activates the yeast. So there's one teaspoon of sugar in this bowl already, and here's the second one. Now we add one cup of lukewarm water, not the boiling water, but lukewarm. And I'm going to stir that so the sugar can get mixed in with the water. Next comes the yeast right here. And I need two tablespoons of this yeast to add to this bowl. There's the yeast. I'm just going to add two tablespoons. There's one, and then there's two. An important thing to remember is make sure that this is not expired. Make sure you check your best before date on your yeast, because if it is expired, then your yeast will not activate, and all of your work will be, well, <laughs> it would be a long day to find out that your yeast is not activated. But the yeast, of course, is what helps the bread to rise. And as you can see, my yeast seems to be doing very well so far. There's some yeast there that's not mixed in with the sugar and the water. So I'm just going to mix it. You can use a fork or you can use a spoon. Just get that all mixed in. Just wipe this off here. Try to get as much yeast back in. To the bowl as I can. It's coming along beautifully. I'm just going to wait just a little bit longer for this hot water to cool down and then when it's all cooled down I'll pour this yeast into the big Tupperware bowl and that will be our next step. I'm back again and the water in this bowl is at a lukewarm temperature so now I can put my yeast See the yeast? <laughs> it's risen quite well. Now I can put the yeast in my big Tupperware bowl. And into the bowl it goes. Just like that. In this very large measuring cup, I have five cups of flour and that is going to go into this Tupperware bowl as well. And then I'm going to stir this all in. It's going to be sticky. But that's why we add a little bit more flour to this bowl once this is all mixed in. So the five cups of flour are mixed in and you can see that it's still pretty, pretty sticky, eh? So we will just slowly add one cup at a time till we can manage it in such a way that it's not so sticky on our hands when we work with it. I added another cup of flour and it's still a little bit sticky. So you can see how it's sticking to my fingers quite a bit there. So I'm going to add yet another cup of flour. Stir it some more. And in just a second I'm going to put this on my counter. 
and work with it with my hands. My very clean hands that I'm always washing. <laughs> I have a habit of always, always washing my hands. All right, so now I'll put this on this right here. Now, if you don't have one of these mats, these here, you can get them in Amazon. You can get them through Amazon. So if you don't have one of these and you just have your countertop, just add some flour to the top of your countertop. I'm just going to get some of the flour from the bowl mixed in there. And then get the bread dough that's on this spoon that needs to come off to join the rest. Still a little bit sticky, but that's okay. We'll work with it now that it's on the counter. We'll probably need to add a little bit more flour, but that's all right. I have a, a cup of flour here on standby. In case it gets so sticky that I need to add just a little more flour. So I'm just working everything in. See, it's really sticky here, see? Add a little more flour. When it gets really, really sticky, like here, this is really wet. Just add some more flour to those spots. And then you just knead it all in. Knead it all in. Oops. See, there's some sticky spots there still. And just knead it all in, trying to get as many air bubbles out of the dough as we can. My mom used to make homemade bread when I was growing up. So I grew up with homemade bread, really. And I grew up watching mom make homemade bread. Sometimes the dough, the bread dough will stick to your fingers. That's all right. There. Yep, mom used to make bread all the time when I was growing up as a kid. So this isn't foreign territory to me. In fact, this recipe that I'm using today is mom's recipe. It's a fantastic recipe. I just keep adding a little bit of flour to the very, very sticky spots. And you can see the change in texture, eh? Compared to when it was in the bowl. It's a lot easier to work with. Now that looks pretty good, my friends, like that. And so since all the yeast is kneaded in and mixed in and the flour is all mixed in and it's not sticky, it's not sticking to my hand, it's not gooey, I'm going to put it back into my huge Tupperware bowl here. Now, some people like to put oil all around the inside of their bowl. This bowl is well used. Um, some people like to put a little bit of oil in their bowl. But I'm not going to do that. It all depends on preference. I'm going to put this right in this bowl. Just the way it is. Yes, this Tupperware bowl, I've had it for many years. You can probably tell. <laughs> It's very, very used. I absolutely love this bowl. I use it for everything. And there it is. Just like that. So my next step is to put this clean tea towel over the top. Just like that. Over the top of the bowl. And the next thing that we're going to do with this big bowl here. There it is. <laughs> The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to head over to the oven. Now I'm not going to turn the oven on, but what I am going to do is turn just the light on that's in the oven. I'm sure most of you have lights inside of your oven that you can turn on manually, but we're not turning on the oven itself, just the light bulb, just the light that's in the oven. Because the heat, the small amount of heat from that light bulb, will help the bread to rise very quickly, actually. Yes, so again, don't turn your oven on. It's too early. You're, if, if you turn your oven on, 
it will bake, not to mention what it'll do to the plastic bowl, but it'll bake your flour and it'll become hard as rock. <laughs> no, we're still in the raising or the rising process of the bread. So we'll just turn the light bulb on and let this bread double in size. And then I'll take you to the next step. I'm back. And it's been about an hour and a half that I've let this just sit in my oven being heated by the light bulb in there. And I'll show you what this looks like. It has doubled in size and it has done very well as you can see. And now I'm just gonna take it out of this bowl and punch it down a little bit. I've got to punch it down and knead it a little tiny bit more. Just take it all out of this bowl here. And if it's really sticky, just add a little bit of flour on the palm of, palms of your hands so it doesn't stick too, too much to your hands when you take it out. So I left the light bulb on in the oven and the oven door is closed, of course. So the heat is staying in my oven. And this has to rise again. This bread dough has to rise again in the bowl. And I'm kneading it again, just like I did before. It doesn't have to be kneaded quite as much as the first time, because everything's all mixed in. But it's just a matter of kneading it again, kneading it down, just like I did the first time. There it is. And we'll put it back in the bowl. Just right in there. And again, put your clean tea towel over the top of it. And again, we will put this bowl back in the oven to be heated up by the light bulb in the oven. And it can rise for a second time. It has to rise again, double in size. So I'll see you guys back here again in about an hour and a half. Hello, I'm back again. And I've just taken this out of the oven and it has risen double in size. And I will show you, I'll take this tea towel off. Da -da -da -da. It has risen. Very nice, huh? So now that this has risen for the second time, what I've done is I've taken out my pans. This is my bread pan. And I have a second one here. And I have taken out this pan here because I think I'm going to make some rolls for tonight. So this recipe here for bread, it can make three nice sized loaves of bread or it can make two nice sized loaves of bread and some rolls. So yes, it goes a long way. It stretches out, that's for sure. So I'm just going to move this over just for a second here. And I have my nonstick spray. And I'm just going to use this in my pans and then we'll go on to the next step. As you can see, I have my bread dough taken out of the bowl and a little bit here is sticky. So I have my flour on standby. I'm just going to put a little bit on the palms of my hands so that this doesn't stick there. So I have the ham nonstick spray in both bread pans and in the pan that I want to use for my rolls. You can see the air bubbles, eh? See the air bubbles there? That's what we're trying to get rid of, as many of those air bubbles as possible. And I have the light still on in my oven, so it's keeping my oven warm. And the light bulb is doing a good job helping the bread to rise. Yep, I don't have to knead it too, too much this time. So this will go into the pans 
and it will rise for a third time and it will be the last and final time that the bread has to rise before we bake it. Okay, so what do we think we want to do first? Do we want to do bread first or the rolls? How about we do the rolls? What do you think about that? So I have the pan here already. You can see the the Pam nonstick spray in there. So we'll do the rolls first. And this isn't difficult at all. I just pinch a little bit off like that. And if it's too, too much, if it's too sticky, I'll just add a little bit more flour. If it's too big, we can just take some of this off, obviously. Take a piece of it off if we want our rolls a certain size. So this is all we do, my friends, for rolls. Easy as pie. And then just put them in the pan. Da 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 da! Very easy. So I'm just gonna continue here, my friends, working on these rolls. There's a, a few sticky spots here. So I just add a tiny little bit of flour. So the, the bread dough is manageable. There we go. Just like that. And then I put it in the pan. I just finished the rolls and this is what it looks like in the pan. And these are going to double in size again. And now I will work on the bread. Some loaves of bread. And that is what this is for. Da -da -da -da! That's what this is for. Now I'm going to be really careful with this because I don't want it to scratch up or cut this mat here. So I'll be very, very careful. So we'll just cut this. Now this is fairly new to me. I, um, I didn't grow up with one of these. So I'm still practicing how to use this. <laughs> I know some women know how to use this. They got it down to a fine art. <laughs> but I'm still learning. There's always something to learn in life, isn't there? I'll learn how to do this as I keep practicing with this handy dandy thing that cuts the bread dough. All right, well, <laughs> there's coming anyway. It's coming. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Pull that apart. Okay, so this will be one loaf, and that'll be the second loaf. And I'm just going to knead this down a little bit before I put it into the, the bread pan. Do -do 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 -do. There's nothing like the smell of bread when it's baking in the oven. It's such a wonderful, wonderful, homey smell. Very, very nice smell. I think it's one of the best smells in the world is the smell. You can hear the air bubbles, eh? As I knead this, you can hear the air bubbles. Just working out the air bubbles while I knead this. There, that's pretty good. So this part here, like it's kind of folded sometimes, it looks like that. You just put that, that part down. And here is my bread pan. Put that in like that. There's one. Move that over there. And I'll bring the second bread pan in, right here, fairly close. There we go. And moving on to this. This is going to be the second loaf of bread. I'll get those air bubbles out of there. Oops, kind of sticky. Some spots. You can hear the air bubbles popping a little bit. Just working them out of the bread dough. Those little pieces like that can come off. There's an air bubble right there. Can you see it? Just need it a little bit more. There we go. Okay, that should be good. That should be good, my friends. And we'll put this into the bread pan. And these will double in size, including these rolls. I'm going to put the tea towel back over the top of them and put them in the oven so they can rise double in size once again. 
there they all are in the oven and I'm just gonna put this tea towel over the top to cover them up and we'll let them sit in the oven for an hour and a half again the oven's not on the oven's not on just the light so my friends I'm gonna let them sit for another hour and a half and that will be the last time that they have to rise for the third time and then we'll be able to bake them in the oven so I will see you in an hour and a half and then we go on to our next step I just took the bread out of the oven after rising for the very very last time and I want to show you how they turned out let's take a look they rose very, very well, as you can see. They've turned out beautiful, and now they're ready for the oven. Another tip and pointer, and that is when you are baking your bread, make sure that the rack is not down near the bottom because it, your bread will burn really easy. If this rack here, if that rack that it's sitting on is close to the burner, close to the bottom, just make sure it's more up, more up, a little bit past the middle, and that will cook really, really well. I just took the bread and the rolls out of the oven, and they turned out beautiful, beautiful. I let them bake for about 45 minutes to an hour. I kept a close watch, and when they get to a certain color of brown, and when you tap them, and it makes like a hollow sound that's when you know it's done so without further ado i'll give you a closer look here are the rolls and here is the bread and they turned out really really nice and this is the sound like a hollow sound and look at the color notice the color that's when you know it's done and they turned out beautiful and I have my margarine here and my little brush because I'm gonna put some margarine on the top here while they're still hot and they'll melt down and it'll look great another Michelle's moments and it's great to be back and I love talking with you all. I have a few things to talk to you about today, some interesting things. Maybe we'll start today off with the contest. This contest that we have, it's a draw and anybody who's new and isn't too sure about this contest, the contest is for this mug, this Michelle the Introvert mug and also this magnet that comes with it. La 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 la! Yes, they go together and it is a draw. And if you're interested and curious about becoming part of this draw and this contest, look in the directions below and there's a few things to explain the contest rules to you. But the, also, the contest closes December 31st. So before you know it, December 31st will be here. So get your names in, my friend. Get your names in for the draw. Send in your postcards or your cards to have your name pulled out of the hat. Another thing that I would really like to talk to you about, and that is something concerning the contents on our, a couple of our YouTube videos. The last one and the one before. If any of you have 
messaged me or made comments to me and have not received back or heard back from me, it's because there seems to be some issues with the comments on the last two videos that we've done. Some comments are coming through, but some are not. And Gerald and I have looked it up and other content creators from, from other YouTube channels seem to be having the same trouble. That people are commenting, making nice comments on their videos, but they're not receiving them. And as you viewers, you're not hearing back from us. But I wanted to give you all the heads up. There seems to be some issues lately with the comments on YouTube. Some of them are getting through, but some of them aren't. So if you haven't heard from me, please don't think that I'm ignoring you. It's just that there's some issues happening with YouTube and the comments. We have notified YouTube. Gerald has messaged them just to let them know that we haven't been receiving some comments. So I'm sure they'll be on the ball and get them things worked out. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to give you the heads up on that. I'm not ignoring anybody. There's just some comments that haven't been coming through. But as soon as we get them, as soon as things get worked out, thumbs up and you'll be definitely hearing from us. The third thing that I would like to talk to you about today, and I'm going to need my glasses for this, and that is a special viewer by the name of Lori had given me some books recently and I was just so thrilled, so excited to receive them. Hi Lori, thank you again for the books. And I want to show you some of the books that she gave us. There's this one right here and this is a really nice history book. And I'm sure this won't take long for Gerald to read through this one. <laughs> I'm going to read it too as well. And this one is Miracles and Mysteries, The Halifax Explosion, December 6th. 1917. Yes, so this looks like a very, very interesting history book. And it won't take us long to read this, Lori. Thank you again for this wonderful book. Another book that Lori gave me, and that is da -da -da -da, Hardy Boys. Yes, I will admit, I am a collector of Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys books. I don't have very many. I'm just basically now starting my collection. I have a few, but thanks to Lori, I have a few more. So I have this really nice Hardy Boys book. Thank you, Lori. And this one here is Nancy Drew. And I have another one that's Nancy Drew. Very exciting. I'm looking forward to reading these. It's nostalgia, my friends. I really like nostalgia and I really like old books. And there's a really nice one and it has a lighthouse. This one looks really interesting, this book here. And this one here is a devotional. So I'll probably start that in the new year on January 1st. Yes, it's very exciting. I like devotionals too. I really like old, old books. This one here is a Christmas novel. So I'll be reading this starting December 1st. A really nice Christmas novel. Thank you again, Laurie. These are excellent. I'm having so much fun. And these are a couple of other books that Laurie gave to me, which is really, very, really, really nice and thoughtful. And you can see how, like, they're very old, they're vintage. But I like vintage, even books. Even vintage books I like. Yes, I do. So I've got lots of reading material and... Oh, it's just so exciting. Such a thrill to get books. <laughs> and thank you again, Laurie, for all these wonderful books and for the Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys books. But I wanted to show you because it's such a thrill, such a thrill to get new books. And the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about, actually, it's something that I want to show you as well. And that is, as you all know, I've been thinking a lot about how prices have been going up. And everybody's noticing that the prices are going up and some people are really finding it hard like some people are really finding things getting just tighter and tighter and tighter and so that's what got me thinking about doing this series this new series of going through recipes and finding some really excellent um, cost-friendly recipes where you can make or buy flour and make so many things just to stretch the dollar, stretch the food out, and several other recipes I'm looking into so I can share them all with you. Oh, and by the way, if any of you have any ideas for cost-effective ideas or tips and pointers 
on how to stretch the money, stretch the food out. I welcome your comments, that's for sure. I definitely welcome your ideas because I'm sure that we can all help each other just by sharing recipes and thoughts and ideas on how we can all just stretch things out and help each other out during a time where the prices keep rising and rising and rising. And speaking of that as well, I have here some freezer bags. And as a lot of you know, a lot of you ladies and a lot of you men know, even freezer bags, the cost of freezer bags is going up. So I'll tell you, I went to Dollarama and I discovered these, these here. Because as you know, you can use these freezer bags, but once they're used, you toss them, right? Well, look at this. I discovered these at Dollarama. These are Ziploc containers. Actually, this is the first time I've seen these. And you know what? These here are made especially to put in the freezer. So they're not just plastic containers with lids. There's the lids there with covers. These are especially made to go in the freezer. So I figured if I don't spend as much money as I was on freezer bags and start investing in these here, because these are reusable. You put them in the freezer and then when you need your food, bring them out, use them and then wash them up and use them again. This is a good investment, I think. And these cost me the same price as this. So I figured this would definitely last longer and would help the money to stretch out a lot further. So I plan to buy a lot more of these and I'll put them in my cupboards and set them aside for when I need them and I'm definitely going to enjoy using them because I'm saving money, saving more money. Sometimes you have to invest just a tiny little bit in order to save a lot more money. Well my friends, this is another Michelle's Moments and I sure enjoyed spending this time with you. And here is my teapot. And here is my fancy Christmas teacup to get us ushered into the Christmas season. Yes, this is quite fancy, I like this. <laughs> and here's my tea, and here's to you all, my little rays of sunshine. I wanted you to get a nice close-up of the roll and what it looks like. Oh, it's hot. Can you see the steam? This is what it looks like inside. And when you put margarine on there when it's still hot, it melts. Or if you put butter, even better if you have butter. And that's what it looks like. Nice and fluffy. Nice and warm. And the butter and the margarine melt when you put it in when it's nice and hot. Fresh out of the oven. Well, my friends, it's been a very, very productive day. It's been a long day, but it's been very productive and very, very rewarding. And one thing that I will say about homemade bread and homemade rolls is that it has a tendency to be filling, and that's another benefit to having homemade bread. It's very filling and it tastes amazing. If you like this vlog, my friends, please give me the YouTube thumbs up or press that subscribe button. That would be great. And I have more vlogs coming up, so stay tuned, and I'll talk to you all soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Here we are, back at another Michelle's Moments. And I have quite a few things to chit-chat with to you about today. Here we are at another Michelle's Moments, and it is so great 